Now we're going to look at the anterior view of the skull. So from the anterior view, we start with the frontal bone. And as we work our way inferiorly, we can start to see, if you remember, N-M-L-E, not my lazy eye. Nasal bone, maxillary bone, which remember comes all the way around here. It's actually your largest of your facial bones. N-M-L for lacrimal bone, and then E for the ethmoid bone, okay? Now when we look inside here, okay, if I can get the angle just right, you'll actually see that we have a couple structures on the inside of this eye socket, okay? We have something called the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is right through here. And we have something called the optic foramen. See that little hole right through there? I'm actually gonna put my pointer right through there. I'm going right through the optic foramen there. And actually where my pointer is sort of mimicking is right where the optic nerve passes through your skull from your brain to your eye. Okay, let's see optic foramen right there. If we look continuing on at some of these other structures that we have, we have something called the supra orbital margin. Supra, meaning above, orbital, think of like the moon orbiting around the earth or the earth orbiting around the sun. It's going in a circular shape, okay? Supra orbital margin is this ridge right along here, okay? We also have something called a supra orbital foramen. Supra orbital, above the orbit, a foramen is a natural opening or a passageway through a bone. This is where nerve supply is going to come out and feed into your forehead. If this is the supraorbital foramen, of course, this one is going to be the infraorbital foramen. Okay, and jumping down a little bit, I'll point this out right now. This is the mental foramen. So one, two, three on this side, and then one, two, three more on this side. Supraorbital, infraorbital, mental foramen. Okay? If we look straight on here, okay, on the, uh, around the, on the inside of the maxillary bone here, we're looking right into the nasal cavity, okay? So running right up and down the middle is actually one of the cranial bones, not a facial bone, but a cranial bone. This is what we call the ethmoid bone. The same ethmoid I pointed out, remember N-M-L-E, not my lazy eye, E ethmoid. This is that same ethmoid right there, okay? And we call this the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. This is a component along with this bone down here, the vomer, the vomer. So the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the vomer combined with cartilaginous tissue to make up your nasal septum. Septum means wall. It's the wall that separates one side of your nasal cavity from the other. In addition to that, inside here we have what we call the concha, okay? We have the inferior nasal concha, again, on either side. We have the middle nasal concha on either side, and you can't see it from here, but way further back and, and higher up is gonna be the superior nasal concha, okay? Um, continuing down from the maxillary bone, we get to the teeth, okay? And then you'll also notice these structures right here, kind of these bumpy ridges along here. You'll see them in the maxilla here, you'll see them in the mandible down here. These are called alveolar processes, okay? Just like your skull is a series of bones that are kind of connected together, your teeth are essentially bones that are, specialized bones, that are connected inside of your skull as well, okay? And the sockets in which they fit are called these alveolar processes. These are non-movable joints, we call it a gomphosis, okay? But you'll see these kind of bumps and ridges along here. If I turn this around from the anterior view, okay, all the way around, we can then look at it from a posterior view. So here's a posterior view of the skull. You can see the parietal bone on either side. You can see the occipital bone right here quite easily. And then you can also see some of the structures of the mandible down here as well, okay?
One thing that's quite prominent is this right here, sutures. Okay, you can see these sutures where the bones kind of connect together. This one right here is called the lambdoid suture. Lambdoid, like the Greek letter lambda, looks like an upside down V, okay? The sagittal suture is the one that runs in the sagittal plane, the sagittal plane. In fact, if I turn this to the side again, you can also see this one that comes right around the top of the head or the crown of the head. That's where we actually get the name coronal suture. The coronal suture is here. The sagittal suture is here. The lambdoid, think of the Greek letter lambda, upside down V, is here. And there's one more I want you to know. It's this right here, the squamous suture. Okay, squamous suture. Remember the temporal squama? That's the flattened area of the temporal bone. This is the squamous suture right here. All right. Again, from this posterior view, you can also see a few other structures. You can see these mastoid processes. If I put my finger behind it, you can see the styloid process here. And again, styloid process on this side. Another mastoid process here. Okay, these are muscle attachment points. And then we have these occipital condyles, which I'll explain in a moment.